The role of the Brigade Headquarters and Signal Squadron is to provide the commander and his staff with the command, control and information systems required to fight the battle throughout the Brigade area. It also provides for the administration and local defense of Brigade Headquarters. The squadron deploys into Brigade Main and Alternate Headquarters, which are supported by A1 and A2 echelon elements. The Brigade Main Headquarters encompasses most of the staff and the bulk of the squadron's signal resources. It includes the command group with the Brigade Commander and his selected staff and advisors. The operations group with the Brigade Operations Center, its support and clerical substaffs and attached elements including support arms representatives, liaison officers and a section from the military police platoon. The signals group comprising the squadron headquarters, the access and radio troops and the main defense and security platoon which provides protection for the operations center and for the commander. And an A1 echelon element which looks after the immediate needs of the headquarters. The brigade alternate headquarters mirrors the structure of the main headquarters group, but on a considerably reduced scale. The commander may operate from his main or alternate headquarters, or he may function from his tactical command post. The TAC-CP comprises command, communications, and liaison vehicles, a selected group of staff and advisors, and a protection party. It enables the commander to exercise personal command over a critical part of the battle at the desired location. The operations center is the hub of the headquarters. It is headed by the G3, who coordinates the execution of all operations, intelligence, and liaison functions. He, in conjunction with the brigade signal officer, also controls the deployment and movement of both the main and alternate headquarters. Adjacent to the operations center is the G4, who is assisted by a small administrative staff. He coordinates all administrative staff activity in support of ongoing and future operations. The G4 also receives queries and advice from service and specialist staff advisors, who are normally located in the brigade administrative area. The arms advisors may also establish staff elements at brigade main headquarters, which advise and support the overall effort, and either direct or provide liaison to their own units. They establish the fire support coordination center, the air defense and artillery intelligence cells, the tactical air control party, and the engineer, aviation, and electronic warfare liaison teams. The commanding officer of the squadron is also the brigade signal officer. As such, he is responsible to plan and coordinate the overall brigade signal effort, to control signal stores, and to assign priorities for the maintenance of signal equipment. As CO of the squadron, he is responsible for the command of the unit and its isolated elements, for the execution of signals operations, and for the administration and defense of the brigade headquarters. The squadron headquarters includes a planning office which looks after forward planning for future operations and the signal command post which oversees the minute-to-minute -minute status of the squadron's radio, line, and radio relay circuits. It also encompasses a field mobile distributing authority, which holds and issues codes and ciphers for the brigade, a cryptographic stores detachment, which handles the specialist cryptographic needs of the squadron, and a monitor detachment, which reports on signal security violations and interference problems. Access Troop provides telephone, teletype, facsimile, and data communications for the headquarters and access to the area trunk system. The troop incorporates a control office which monitors the functioning of the troop's communications. An access node which incorporates a message center with secure teletype and facsimile service, radio relay terminals and repeaters, automatic voice and data switches, and an offline crypto capability. A line section, which lays and maintains the required line communications down to regiment, battalion, and independent squadron level. They are also responsible for local lines within the headquarters, remotes to the radio park, and tails from radio relay terminals. A dispatch rider section, which operates the signal dispatch service for the brigade, along with special and air dispatch services. 
operators to handle data inputs for the automated combat information system, and a distributing authority which looks after the troops' crypto account. The radio troop provides combat net radio communications for the brigade voice and data, command, administrative, and guard nets. The troop provides a headquarters control element which plans, tasks, controls, and monitors the minute-to-minute -minute operation of the brigade radio nets. The vehicles, which are used by the brigade headquarters staff in the main headquarters location. The brigade commander's tactical command post. The rovers used by brigade staff and liaison officers. The radio rebroadcast detachments used to extend the range of a given net. And the brigade's main and rear link radio detachments. The greater part of its personnel and equipment are located in a nearby radio park and the radios are remoted into the various command and staff vehicles of the headquarters. The squadron A2 echelon is located from 5 to 10 kilometers to the rear of the main headquarters. It contains the bulk of the squadron's administrative resources, mainly comprising the squadron's refueling, stores and repair parts vehicles, a kitchen, the unit medical station, and mobile repair teams which provide recovery and repair to the squadron's vehicles, trailers, generators, and weapons. It also includes a telecommunications maintenance section with MRTs for the repair of radio, terminal, and cipher equipment. Also located with the A2 echelon are any radio and radio relay detachments not required at the main or alternate headquarters locations. The brigade main and alternate headquarters are located where they can control subordinate units and still communicate with higher and flanking formations. Locations are selected where the terrain allows communications in the desired directions and on ground that is high enough for good reception. A site should be readily accessible by wheeled vehicles from the brigade's main axis and include a nearby cleared area for use as a landing zone. There must be adequate space for dispersion and a degree of concealment from air observation. A site should require minimal signal or engineer preparation prior to its occupation. It should be defensible against ground attack and, where possible, gain a degree of protection from a nearby unit. In considering the layout of the headquarters, the operation center must be at the core of the headquarters complex, where it is guarded by a picket and protected by other headquarters elements. The command group is located in a quiet area adjacent to the operations center. The signals command post is sited close to both the operations center and the communications elements. The access node area is near the vehicle park, with the message center readily accessible to DRs, LOs, and visitors. The information post and car park are near the entrance. Administrative facilities are positioned to provide easy access and to complement the defensive posture of the HQ. Rest areas should be away from centers of activity. And the radio park may be sited up to 10 kilometers from the headquarters. In operations, combat net radio is the primary means of communication within the brigade. Its use will vary with the type of operation and the inherent danger it poses in revealing the location of the headquarters. Remote sighting of the radio park improves the security of the headquarters by reducing its radiation signature. It also allows the headquarters to be located in a protected site that is not necessarily good for communications. The area trunk communication system is almost totally reliant on radio relay, which favors the use of high ground. Terrain masking, together with the use of repeaters and elevated sites, will help guard against their early detection and engagement by the enemy. In consideration of the continuing requirement to move the headquarters, the G3 and the signal staff selected several probable locations, which were subsequently checked out and their suitability was recorded for later use. Just prior to a move, the G3 authorizes the dispatch of the headquarters recce party to one of the pre-selected locations. It conducts a sweep of the area, lays out the site in accordance with the standard pattern and the requirements of that particular piece of ground, signs the location, and then calls in the advance party, which has been waiting nearby. 
When the advance party arrives, it starts preparing the site, lays out defenses, establishes communications, locates a landing zone, signs the traffic circuits, and starts laying the required lines. At a given time, control is transferred from Brigade Main to alternate headquarters. The main headquarters then packs up and moves to its new location, where it joins up with its advance elements. Throughout the move and during the setup period, the headquarters remains on radio silence, with the staff monitoring operations to remain abreast of the situation. A small rear party is left behind to redirect visitors and to relay traps. The alternate headquarters continues to run the operation until control is returned to the main HQ. It then goes back on listening watch and moves to a new location. The headquarters and signal squadron provides the brigade commander and his staff with the communications required for the ongoing battle. It also defends, administers, and moves the brigade headquarters in accordance with its operational needs. Signals is a member of and contributor to the all-arms team on the battlefield. 